Today on this 2014 Honda Odyssey, we're going to review and install the Airlift 1000 Air Helper Springs for Coral Springs, part number AL60815. You can see here, these springs actually reside inside the coil springs. Now it does come with all the hardware fitting and airline needed to install. Here's our T right here that goes out to both airbags. And we go to the back of the van. You see it one single valve right here that allow you to inflate up both at the same time. Now lift capacity is going to be 1,000 pounds for these air springs. We'll go ahead and show our stock measurement on our van first. We'll measure from the ground to the top of the fender wheel. Our measurement will be about 30 and a quarter inches. Now we have some weight added to the back of our vehicle using a cargo carrier. We'll go ahead and get our second measurement. All right, now it looks like we brought it down to about 29 inches. It looks like on our new measurement, it looks like the van went down about an inch. We'll go ahead and take a test drive and watch how suspension works when it's loaded down without any help from the air springs. Now the weight in the back of the van, of course, made it squat down, but also altered the handling just a little bit where you can feel it back there. Now with the airbags in place, we're weight back in our vehicle, we inflated the bags up to a maximum of 35 pounds, and we brought our ride height up to about 29 and 3 quarters. So it's just a little bit shy of our original height, but it still should work out just fine. Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive and see how it handles. Of course, the weight's still back there, and of course, it's still not quite the ride height, but it handles so much better when you have that installed on your van. All right, next we'll go ahead and show you how we installed it on our Odyssey. First off, you're gonna to need to be able to lift this vehicle up in the air so you can let the suspension hang down. Next, you wanna go ahead and remove the wheel. We're gonna be working with the driver's side. Using a 22 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and remove the lug nuts. Then we can go ahead and take off the wheel. Next up, we need to go ahead and remove this bolt right here. Then this allows us to lower this arm, which is connected to the spring. Now, we want to be careful when we do this, we're going to place a jack underneath here and use that to support it to take the bolt out, and then we can lower it in a controlled manner. Next, we'll remove this bolt here using a 17 millimeter socket. Before I lower it down, I'm going to make a mark on my spring and this cup that the spring sits in and this arm. I'm just going to make a simple line so I know I have everything back in the right place when we put it back together. We'll use the jack to go ahead and lower it slowly. There's still a considerable amount of pressure on the spring, so you really want to be careful when you do this. Once the pressure is released, we'll go ahead and move the jack out of the way. And we have our spring loose. I'm going to push the arm down to give us room to remove the spring. We'll take this little ring out of the way too. And we'll clean up the top of our arm here. Now this jount stop right here, we have to remove this part and this part. There's a bolt on the inside that we remove using a 14 millimeter socket. Shallow socket with about a six inch extension works good. This is a pretty long bolt, so it'll take quite a few turns to remove it. Go ahead and clean up the top of the arm here because we're going to be putting a template on top of this because we have to drill a hole through the top for our airline tubing. All right, this is a template that comes with the kit. I just basically cut out the one of the pages in the instructions and I covered up with some uh, clear tape just to make it a little more durable as we tape it down because we have to use it on both sides. You can see there's a hole that's already drilled out where it says hole location. We want this hole going towards the center of the vehicle. So I'll put it on top, center it up, and I'll use some more tape to hold it in place. All right, now with a template in place, I'm gonna use a quarter inch drill bit. It does help to have a right angle drill for this. And I'll drill out my pilot hole.
I'm going to remove my pattern. I'm going to enlarge the hole to three quarters of an inch using the hole saw. Next, I'm going to work with my airline tubing. What I'm going to do is on this one, I'm going to put it over the top of a frame of the rear suspension, pull it through, and then I'm going to route it inside this arm here, which is all hollow. So I'm going to run this to the inside of the arm here, then route it down towards the inside. Now there's a hole at the bottom here. I'm going to fish it out. Take up our slack. Then we'll run it back up through the top of the hole we just drilled. Let's get our airline ready to put onto our air spring. And we'll put the small clamp that comes with the kit over the line. Then I'll take this and put it into our air spring. This will slip over the barb fitting on the air spring. Push it into place. Once we have it in place, we're going to take a clamp. Using suppliers really helps. Squeeze it open and then put it onto the fitting. All of this will fit inside the spring. Then we'll put the spring back into place. We'll go and feed as much line as we can inside here then put our spring back into place. It definitely helps have an extra set of hands if you can to kind of help line everything up. Make sure we take up all our line. Kind of help pull it into place. Work our spring back in. Make sure all our marks line up like they did originally. We'll make sure the fitting here goes through the hole and doesn't get caught up. You may want to put everything together and do a quick dry fit to make sure it sits the way you want it. All right, let's go ahead and use our jack and put our arm back up into place. Now be careful, this is a lot of tension underneath here. At this point, we can still double check to make sure our airbag is sitting correctly inside and it's not in a bind with the line. Then we go ahead and take our jack away and we can put the tire back on. All right, we're gonna leave our driver's side alone for now. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process over on our passenger side. It's gonna be identical except for one little detail that it comes with a heat shield that goes onto the exhaust to protect the air spring. All right, this is our heat shield material. Pretty simple to install. First up, we're gonna go ahead and bend these two tabs up and make an angle like this. So it'll seat up against the exhaust like this and then we'll use the provided C-clamps to hold it in place. We'll angle it where it sits between the exhaust and the air spring. Loosen up our clamps. Go ahead and get them started. We need a flat blade screwdriver or a 5 16 nut driver for this. Slip the one tab in. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. Tighten it up just to hold it. Then we'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other side. Once we have it the way we want it, we'll go ahead and tighten it down for good. We'll go ahead and work our location for our airline fittings to air them up. Now, there's not much really to work with here, but I'm going to make my own bracket. I'll be using part number 18140. This is a universal short bracket. We're going to put it just like this and use a provided clamp. Same 516 bit. Okay. Well, let's just tight enough to hold it in place for now in case we have to make some adjustments. Let's go ahead and mount our air valve to our bracket. Now, this bracket has uh, four holes already drilled out. I took one and I drilled out to five sixteenths. To get my valve ready, one nut goes on here and then the star washer. Run the valve through, then we'll add a 
rubber washer, a flat washer, and another nut. We'll run that down using a half inch socket. Just use a socket, my hand will work. Okay, let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit so it's a little bit easier to install our line. Now let's go ahead and work for air lines. Now there's plenty of length of air line that we can run them both up to the front. However, a light duty application like on our van here, uh, it's more commonplace to go ahead, tee the two together and use just one air line going up towards the valve. We'll go ahead and cut our air lines to the length we want. There you go. Now just like on our airbags, we have to install the clamps. So we'll put them on the tubing first. Then we'll install our teeth. Now these can be a tight fit. It may help to warm them up like with some hot water to help make them a little more flexible and slide them on the barbs. Once we have our hoses in place, we'll go ahead and slide the clamps on. Now I'll take our remaining air line, we'll go ahead and route it up to our air valve. I think we'll do is we'll come around the trunk pan here by the hitch. Okay. And run up to our air valves. We'll leave a little bit extra in there in case we have to make some adjustments at a later date. One more clamp and we'll put on our air valve. We'll go ahead and put our bracket back where we want it. Any excess, we can actually cut it off, or, cause that, but I will leave a sharp edge. So you might be able to just twist it up and fold it back. That way you won't have a sharp edge. Then we'll take a few moments to zip tie our airline tubing to keep it secure. At this point we have everything installed. We can go ahead and take it off the lift, let it sit down on the ground. Let's go ahead and air them up and do the first test run. Now when we air up the airbags, we do have a limit of up to 35 pounds of pressure. Now finish it for the Airlift 1000 Air Helper Spring, part number AL60815 on this 2014 Honda Odyssey.